World of Warships got a new roadmap, and we now have a pretty clear idea of what's coming into the game for 2022. So in this video, I'm going to look over it and pick out the more important pieces, the things that I think are important to know about going into 2022 here for World of Warships. Of course, I'll link the full waterline roadmap in the description below if you want to read through everything. But uh, these are the most important things that I think are coming in 2022. French cruisers, to start with, have been in testing for a little bit. And in 11.4, we're going to get our first early access. So, of course, that means two full updates where we don't really have access to all the French cruisers. So it looks like 11.6 is when the full release of French cruisers will happen. So it'll be interesting to see how they function. They're large caliber forward mounted guns with reasonable speed, but kind of poor armor um, might be an interesting ship to have. Although, of course, we have some pretty decent battle cruisers in the game already, and they tend to suffer from not having fire prevention anymore, and potentially some longer fire durations too. So we'll see how these ones end up, but if they're really good at long range, I can certainly see them having a place and being pretty good in the meta, especially if they have the French HE, which is notoriously one of the best HE shells in the game. We're also going to see Arms Race be pushed into random and co-op battles as a normal game mode. Uh, this is going to be a little bit interesting to me. Um, of course, any damage records and people who hunt leaderboard spots on uh, for each ship, well, all of those records are basically going to be based on how many games of Arms Race you can get. Uh, of course, there's so much more HP to farm in arms race so anybody looking to leaderboard certain ships for damage uh yeah you're gonna have to really work on that again and if you've already done a ship well you're at a disadvantage so i'm not so sure about arms race coming in but that's a very niche reason i think one of the main issues with arms race is that it leads to more steamrolls once a team gets a little bit ahead on the uh uh, upgrades that Arms Race provides, the games tend to snowball out of control very, very quickly. I find we're already having a lot of quickly decided games where it's just a blowout victory or a blowout loss, and I think Arms Race is only going to make that worse. That's my major concern. The uh, damage farming, that's just a very niche one that is a side effect of adding Arms Race into the game. The real problem is the blowouts, in my opinion. Those are, of course, the spring updates, so all of those will be coming into the game at least by next patch, because summer is right around the corner. And in summer, we're getting some British battleships. And these new British battleships look to be a battle cruiser line, so it'll be interesting to see if they're like the incomparable at all, where they have pretty amazing concealment with a few number of large caliber guns and are pretty fast as well. Could be an interesting line, although if you guys know, I really did not like the incomparable at all. I did not enjoy six guns on that battleship and the inconsistencies that come from that few number of shells. But it'll be an interesting line to see for sure. I'm always interested in a new battleship line coming to the game. They're also looking at adding a new iteration of Convoy where they're breaking out the convoys into multiple paths, hopefully producing more interesting game modes that don't just result in destroyers yoloing to spot the enemy's convoy ships and then all of the battleships and cruisers just rushing to focus out the convoy to win the game. I think this could be interesting, but I don't see it being particularly popular. And now we get to probably the most important part or the uh, most controversial probably part of this roadmap the return of the puerto rico of course puerto rico was a massive massive failure for wargaming this initial dockyard was just awful it was impossible to grind out unless you spent like 12 hours a day on the game or forked over some money right it was around three four hundred dollars i believe somewhere in there and uh, it didn't help that uh, some wargaming employees happened to, well, let's just say, not exactly respond to the criticism in the right way. Uh, would you or any wargaming employee be willing to grind the Puerto Rico event without boosters live? Um, so 
I, I don't see think uh, so. You want someone uh, to basically sit here at work streaming throughout all of December and and most of like half of January to grind Puerto Rico while at work. I don't think that's I I don't think that's entirely uh, realistic because we we do actually have to like work. I'm sorry. So it looks like it will be coming back in a more reasonable dockyard that is much easier to obtain. And for people who already have Puerto Rico, there should be some different rewards for doubloon, steel, coal, or research points if you also complete it. But that's a very small number of players because not many people actually got the Puerto Rico. I think that for the ma vast majority of people who played back then or who are newer to the game, um, this is your opportunity now to actually get the Puerto Rico. Which of course is basically a big Alaska with worse dispersion, worse reload, and slightly better armor, but is really not very maneuverable and has much worse concealment. It seemed like just a mediocre ship. Alaska at tier nine seemed a little better to me, but keep in mind, I have not played this ship at all yet, so I don't really know. I'm just basing this off of the stats of the ship and what I've seen it capable of doing in the game. And finally, we're getting the return of operations. These PVE modes that were very interesting scenarios have kind of just been forgotten. I thought they were really cool, and unfortunately Wargaming nerfed some of them incredibly hard because they actually paid out pretty good XP rewards, which I thought was really bizarre. I think it was really cool that there was an opportunity to join a lobby with some friends or even just some random people in a queue and play a PvE game mode where there was a really cool operation that you carried out with those people against the AI and that it actually rewarded you with experience. I never really understood why they removed that. I thought it was cool that they rewarded you for playing the game and playing a different game mode than just the same old boring random battles. Uh, but here we're finally getting them back, so I'll be curious to check these out and hopefully they'll have some interesting ones, reworking some of the old ones to add the updated carrier mechanics and maybe some new interesting ones as well. Looks like we'll also be getting a new map in 11.5, the one they've teased since uh, fall 2021, the uh, Faro Islands, probably mispronouncing that, but... Uh, a new map is cool, it'll be interesting to see what the more modern map will look like, see if Wargaming has learned from their mistakes in the past with map design, or if they're continuing blindly forward with all these massive issues with their current map design. And this is a huge change here, separation of exterior elements and economic bonuses. So now they're looking to rework the entire economic system based around camos and flags. We'll see how this goes. I've really debated making a video on this one because the dev blob was absolutely massive and quite confusing. But the gist of it to me seems like their intentions are uh, to retain the same amount of economic bonuses you're going to get out of your camos and flags. They'll just be in a more simplified, easier to access uh, portion of the game. It won't be so complicated and reliant on having a whole assortment of different camos and flags, which is good. I think simplifying that and making it easier to use and stack these bonuses is a great idea. The problem is I can't help but feel that going forward into the future, we're gonna see less of these huge economic bonuses that we've been getting from some of the ultra rare special flags that you can obtain from playing uh, clan battles for sure. I think maybe even some ranked battles as well. And some of these camos you're getting as well are just unbelievable. Winning a clan battle game with all of these economic bonuses stacked, I've seen upwards of 50,000 free XP gained per game. Uh, yeah, pretty insane levels of XP farming there. And I can't help but think Wargaming wants to limit that. So while these economic bonuses will be translated over one to one or even more favorably, I think that in the future we might see a overall reduction of uh, these massive economic bonuses being handed out. So that's what I'm worried about, but uh, well, we'll just see what happens in the future, right? Changes to the battle camera to me is very important. I find it kind of strange that the default camera 
tends to cut off over half of my ship on the bottom of my screen. And since I'm generally focused on the middle of the screen, right, trying to aim and look for targets, I basically feel like I don't see the ship I'm playing that much at all. So giving the opportunity for players to tweak and adjust their own battle camera to what they like is awesome. I'm really looking forward to this, and I hope that it's got easy enough controls with enough customization. The World of Warships Legends, the console camera, I think is much, much better. It puts the ship in a much nicer frame on the screen while still giving a good view of the battle. So that's the end of the summer additions according to this roadmap. And now we're getting into fall. And here we see Japanese light cruisers. This is something that I've kind of thought about for a while, why we haven't seen any Japanese light cruisers. The American tech tree line has been filled out pretty heavily with alternate lines and the Japanese one really hasn't. So it'll be very interesting to see what these ones look like. 155 Mogami has been such a classic uh, powerhouse that people have loved in the game. So seeing a whole line that looks a little bit like that could be interesting, or maybe it'll be even a bit of a different route, but uh, we're finally gonna get to see Japanese light cruisers. And near the end of the year, it looks like they're also going to be working on another new map on top of this Faro Islands. And hopefully, like they say, continuing reworking maps and ports to bring them up to a modern visual quality. There's a large difference between the more modern or updated maps and some of the older maps. Uh, I really, really hope they continue to work on this because there's, to me at least, a massive difference in visual quality between these two. So that is the roadmap for 2022. I'm really curious to know what you guys think of these updates. I think there's some good and some bad in here as usual. I just hope that some of the things that I'm worried about in some of these not so great roadmap portions aren't actually as bad as I think. But uh, that's going to do it for me for today. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.